Three days? Yes. Nah. One hour? Hmm. You must be kidding me. Of course I'm open to trying that new service. That's what we preach in the boardroom. I'll get back to you, hopefully within an hour. Hi, I'm Anthony Pangilinan, and in this episode of The Boardroom, I've just been asked by a partner in China to transfer funds using a new service by this company called Align Commerce. Supposedly, it's cheaper, faster, and it is safer. So it's a replacement service for the traditional bank transfer. Well, let's see if it works. And I'll get back to him in an hour. Aldo Carascoso, together with a team of world-class industry veterans, founded Align Commerce, a financial startup that aims to make payments easier, cheaper, and a whole lot faster. What started in Aldo's garage in Westlake, California, is now servicing 60 countries worldwide, allowing people to send and receive money in less than a day. All it needs is your name, business, and email for you to secure and send payments to the rest of the world in a faster and more reliable system that Align created to lessen costs and inconveniences. Hey Anthony, welcome to Align. Hey Aldo. Welcome to the boardroom. Glad to be here, thanks for having me. Okay, so I'm trying to make a payment and I heard that you have this platform. Ano ba tawag dito? Ano ba to? So essentially it's an online payment platform. All you need to do is to log in to, you know, go to your browser like Chrome, Firefox, or IE. Just type in aligncommerce.com which is what we'll have right now. Yep, and then create an account, uh, verify your email, and then you just submit some docs because we follow some pretty uh, hectic know your customer type of thing. Then you can start creating payments to any of 60 countries. So I want to transfer money from my account to my supplier in China, yes. my consulting supplier. Yes. I use my email, yes. but how does it work? Tell me. So again, step by step, number one. So essentially, you just log in with your email. Okay. Okay, and then number two, you need to know your supplier's email in China. Of course. So you input that information, like what you have right here. Okay. If your supplier in, uh, exists in our system, essentially what happens is we automatically find them and we repopulate all of the field. So right. we've, we've taken that unnecessary step of you having to know their information. Gotcha. Right? So it's a lot uh, faster. When you click next, essentially, it's trying to now create a payment order, right? Now, you know, since we're in the Philippines, and then, you know, we know that we're trying to send to China, we're going to give you a choice. You know, we've always taken, you know, if you're a Filipino company, you don't, you never receive dollars, right? You mm -hmm. have to buy. Mm -hmm. That's a big headache. Right. So we've taken and that. And all the costs, no, yeah, of yeah. Uh, we've changing. Taken, yeah. We've taken that away, essentially. We only take Philippine pesos into our bank account, and then we transmit that Philippine pesos into, let's say, you want to send CNY or USD to China. You can have a choice. And if you actually look at it right now, we're one of the first uh, um, FX uh, uh, systems that basically allow you to see real-time foreign exchange. So we're very transparent. Gotcha. Uh, correspondent banking and, and or traditional banking is very opaque. We wanted to turn that world upside down by making it completely transparent. Okay, so you, it's faster. Absolutely. It's secure. Faster, cheaper, secure. It's also transparent. So it's 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 really a system meant for the user. Right? We started a line essentially to empower the small and medium enterprise. We wanted business to make sure, business. Business, business. We wanted to make sure that we could we could give them these tools. Like they needed to upload an invoice or be able to create reports around it. We could give them the option. They don't well, have to do it. I like it. I like it. Yeah. But I'd like to get to know more about the person behind a line, the people behind a line, the CEO, the mind, the heart behind a line. And we can't do it here. Perfect. So let's go to the boardroom. Perfect. So what motivates and enables someone like you to start up over and over and over again? Uncharted, almost dangerous waters. I, I think, Anthony, one of the most important things is purpose. Why you do something and how many people you impact. It's very important that you know, we become more responsible about what we do. It's not about making money, it's about adding value to people's lives. And that purpose gives you the courage to step into the unknown. Is there a problem that Aldo wants to solve for the world? regardless of what startup he begins. So what's always been consistent with me, Anthony, was I've always wanted to improve people's lives through technology. But why psychology? I mean, you took psychology, but you are into technology. I it's mean... The, it is the most important skill. So there was a purpose behind Absolutely. taking psychology, but you had an interest in technology. So mm -hmm. can, you, can you tell us how yeah, yeah, that yeah. decision came about? So I had a conversation with a bunch of people and asked them, you know, business. 
what do you think, or if you look at just life in general, what's the most important skill you need? Was it finance, understanding numbers, knowing supply chain, logistics, is it mathematics? Someone said to me, no, guess what? It's about the ability to mobilize people, the ability to make them touch their lives, to be able to motivate them and to show them a much better way of doing something. But don't you have to go deep into something? Like if you're gonna get, and as you are yeah. in technology, yeah. don't you have to go deep through study? It's very important, but that doesn't allow you to scale. But how do you scale a business to 60 countries where you can't even divide yourself? So what do you have to do? You have to find people. Right. And you have to not empower, but repower them. And when I say- What's we, the difference between empowering and repowering? This is a very sensitive topic in the Valley, actually. When you say empower, they get mad because empower means you don't have it. I'm giving you something. Ah, right. Repower means it's always been in me and I just, you know, woken up the sleeping dragon. Because you need to make people, when they buy into your core resource, Anthony, and you know, you have people who work for you. I never call them resources. They're always people. The people who I work with. They don't work for me. I work with them. In fact, I work for them. Every time we do something, it's about helping a bunch of people. Are you like me? You dislike waiting in long lines and filling up forms over and over and over again, asking the same details again and again and again. Worse, they don't even tell you up front how much it's gonna cost you when the process ends. Well, Align Commerce eliminates all that by making each payment transparent, seamless, and stress-free. Aldo tells us how he does all this and more when the boardroom returns. Joy. Scratch paper, please. Aldo could have taken business, management, or technology to prepare himself for his adventurous life in Silicon Valley. Instead, he took up psychology. Not because he didn't know what he initially wanted, but precisely because he found out what it takes to run a successful commercial enterprise. Aldo tells us more. What does it take to be a founder of one company? You just have to be able to execute. For me, the really good entrepreneurs, the founders, are able to execute unwavering. Next, they're able to build an awesome, like an extraordinary core team. And okay, uh, just on, 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 my, on my part now, I always like shooting for like the fences, like real innovation. I want to create something that's the first version of something that's never been done. So bearing something from zero to one. You know, question the, t question the status quo, real innovation, disruption. Be an annoyance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chief not... annoyer. Yeah. That's a nice term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then elicit change, just like what we did with the blockchain. When we started this, no one even knew about it. You know, we were talking about 2000, uh, late 2013, you know? No bank would touch it. No respectable person would put their name around it. Because when you would Google the word um, blockchain or more familiar Bitcoin. Bitcoin, by the, way, the currency. We're, we're not a Bitcoin company, just to be clear. Right. No. We're not a currency, we're not, we're not a wallet, we're not a bank, we're a payment service provider. We're a replacement for telegraphic transfers and the SWIFT system. I know that you used to travel to the Philippines every three months, but yeah. now it's every month, you know? Yeah, so how I, does that work for you? Sorry, I'm just, I'm just looking at now the community in the Philippines, yeah. technology, startups, yeah, yeah, and yeah. where you come from, Silicon yeah. Valley in the US. Yeah. How, do, how does that, isn't this two different worlds completely? Uh, I've been blessed to be able to participate in both arenas. Both have almost the almost different rules because in the United States it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of merit-based mm -hmm. systems. Mm -hmm. People will do something because it makes yeah. sense. Yep. It makes sense. They'll do something. Pragmatic. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, you talk to someone and then you say, oh, it makes sense, I'll do it. In Asia, this is what a lot of Silicon Valley types that try to go here don't understand. Relationships. Right. It's important to make the deep connection with right, somebody. Right, right. How do you do that? How do you shift? How do you keep on shifting? As a COO of a company operating in two you know, different worlds mm -hmm. and one extremely advanced Silicon Valley and here mm -hmm. we're merely starting up in the field of startups. Yes. How do you balance that? How do you, how do you stretch yourself? You know what? I've actually told this to a bunch of people that ask me, when I get here, 
It's like I never left. Mm. I'm not kidding. And it's the same thing I tell people when I land SFO. It's like I never left. I'm just on it. And I think one of the most important things are all of these communication platforms that allowed, it, allowed me to do. So again, people. Mm -hmm. Your ability to be a chameleon, whoever you're talking about. So what value do you see the Filipinos bring into technology? I'm telling you, um, I've managed teams from all around the world, from you know, India, Ireland, Romania, Ukraine, mm -hmm. Russia, even Mexico teams, complemented by some of the most technically creative engineers. And those are the Pinoy. Technically creative? Yes. Parang left-right brain combination. Yeah. We have that. And what do they do? They work for a BPO. You know what they should work for, Anthony? They should work for a KPO. Could you distinguish the two? BPO to KPO? A BPO, basically, you're repeating a process. Right. And all you're doing is you're repeating a process for less cost. Which bots will replace. <laughs> Which Ultimately, bots will replace, yeah. yes. We should actually be innovating. For example... So K KBO is a knowledge base. Uh, some of you know, our, our aligned engineers here are some of the first blockchain in engineers for payments in the world. In fact, they acquired so much blockchain and payments knowledge, Anthony that we had to bring them to the United States to teach first generation type of engineers. You exported the We had to export to teach intelligence. Americans. Intelligence. It's not a process. They had to tell them this is how it works, this is what it's done. And this is Pinoy's. Okay, but that's, that's a Pinoy. But the Philippines is not the same as the Pinoy. Yeah, in terms sure. of culture, in sure. terms of system, sure. in terms of legislation, sure. regulation. Sure. So, what do you have to say about the country being prepared for startups, especially in the field of technology? What, well, what can we, what's our state and what should we do? We need better connectivity because we live in a connected world already. We need more people to love technology, like really, really be passionate about it. Mm -hmm. Not as a job, as a passion. Right. Right, that's one thing, no? So the ecosystem. The other one is government programs. If you look at uh, Singapore, Temasek, mm -hmm. they spend so much money with startups. They've got this great government program, you know, capturing VCs, investing in startups. And that's a government-owned uh, sovereign fund. So I always say to people, I love the Michelangelo example. Mm -hmm. When Michelangelo saw David, it was a block. Right. Uh -oh. Basically, he says, David sleeps inside. Right. And, and all he said was, all I did was take out right. what was not David. Right. We need a Michelangelo or a Michelangelo superstar person in the Philippines to drive this forward. Imagine tracking a package. You know where it is from the time it left the manufacturer until it reaches your doorstep. Well, Align Commerce does that for you, but for your money. With this technology, you can worry less about where your money's headed. Next, Algol talks about where he feels and senses this company is going and the steps he is taking to get there. Well, after learning all that, you might still ask, why should I entrust my hard-earned money with a financial startup? Well, that's a question you will have to answer. But if you do, you're not in bad company. Kleiner Perkins, Silicon Valley Bank, recruit strategic partners have invested a minimum of $12 million in this company, seeing its viability, dependability, and potential for growth. Aldo tells us how he and his trusted team plans to run this business in the future for you and for me. Where does Align come in now? When so, you look at your long-term yeah. vision yes. or short-term. Yeah. Let me start with the purpose. Align was started not because of ideology. A lot of people start blockchain companies because it's cool. Mm -hmm. We started it to empower the small guy. We wanted to level the playing field between this small guy that had absolutely was marginalized and you know had no leverage over these banks. So you're referring to small guys, small businesses? Businesses, okay, yes. So B2B. Right, right, right. Okay. right. So okay. we're just leveling the playing field. Right. We've given them a way to send global payments, mm -hmm. PHP to, let's say, uh, CNY or USD, and they can send it in a frictionless and seamless system. It's a replacement for the telegraphic transfer system and wire. 
So therefore, your business model, saan ka kumikita dyan? Is it on the number of transactions, the size of transactions? Foreign exchange. Foreign exchange. That's only. So okay. we've, you know, the blockchain is a near real-time settlement system. So a line is not, we're not a wallet, we're not a bank. Okay. Right? We deposit funds into our bank account, it materializes in the other side, and we never keep them for more than a few minutes. Okay. I know you said you're four or five years ahead of yeah. the typical, you know, finance uh, player. Yes. Nasa anong stage ka na when it comes to getting the communities, getting the businesses into the blockchain approach when it comes to dealing with financial transactions? Well, you know, the big problem right now with the blockchain approach is a bunch of geeks are talking about it. When you talk, when you talk geek, the normal person cannot understand. If okay. you actually search blockchain, you look at like Ethereum or smart contracts. It's a lot of geek speak. So there's a lot of content. We need more layman's advocates. Okay, that's what you have to do. That's exactly what and I That's do. what we're trying to do here. Yeah. So is this the experience of every startup, especially from zero to one? It's not just setting up your company, it's re-transforming a community. It's very, and you must be committed to both. It's very important to, um, to always look for a better way, right? But that also requires you to educate. So I spend a tremendous amount of time educating people on layman's things. I always say, what does Align want to do? Very simple. We want to make cross-border wire transfers, like buying a cup of coffee. Because right now, if you do it, it's laborious, it's opaque, so much preparation. You need to get, you know, foreign exchange, and you don't even know where the money is, or you get hacked. <laughs> now we're trying to tell people, use Align. They, when they pay on the 15th, Pagising ng umaga. Actually, they pay on the 14th. Pagising ng umaga here, it's the 15th. The money is in their bank accounts. We give them the exact amount. At walang kaltas. And they get it real time. So we save the capital. And we provide the end user with real time payment. Okay, so you explain that in five minutes. But if I were to give you, and I pre warned you for this, pre warned yes. you for this. Yes, yes. You're stuck in an elevator. Yes. You see somebody yes. whom you need to convince. Yes. And you have 30 seconds. Yes. So how would you make a pitch for a line and its services? Ready, set, go. If you need to make a payment to 60 countries and you have five seconds to spare, all you need to do is to create an account on Align Commerce. That you link your bank account and upload some of your docs. We'll make that process for you one click, like buying a cup of coffee. Oh, look at that. You still have 10 seconds to spare. <laughs> I'm okay. This startup discussion is about to wrap up. Okay, let's talk a bit of legacy. Sure. Ano ang wedding legacy ni Aldo when all is said and done. I'd like to be known as the guy that made people's lives better. I'll tell you this. One of the best conversations I've had was with a parent of a student that was uh, sending them uh, after tuition payments. And they told me, sir, you know, I'd like to thank you. Because, because of you, whenever I send my, my son or daughter tuition payments, you're giving me back two weeks worth of baon. You see that? That is one of the best conversations I've ever had. It's unbelievable. It's real. Unbelievable. You know, money is, un it happens. But when you affect people's lives, they remember you. Well, thank you for using the boardroom as a channel to help you push that vision and that legacy. Because indeed, I know from those who watched, you've made quite a few lives better. Thank you very much for your time. Well, Salam. Thank you. If you will annoy me or change my ways towards a better life, then annoy me all you can. Hello? You got it? Great. Well, it's mutual. You got the money and I got the point. Bye. In a gentle way, shake the world. Mother Teresa. Join me again next week as we engage some of the country's top business leaders, innovators, and executives. I'm Anthony Pangilinan, and this is The Boardroom.